Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. If you are new here, welcome. We are happy to have you for all of you guys that have been with me for a while. Um, welcome back. Today we're gonna do something that you guys have requested um, on a couple occasions. And so I get requests all the time to review canned food and I will admit I have been putting it off because it does involve a little bit of math. And so if you've ever picked up a canned food, um, you'll notice that when you look at the guaranteed analysis, the numbers seem off. And and so usually they seem really, really low. So if you look at that protein level, it's gonna say something like 10%, 11%. Um, and you're thinking to yourself, well, that, you know, that just doesn't seem right. Um, and it's not. And the reason why it's not right is because when we look at um, the guaranteed analysis, it's on an as-fed basis. We talk about this a lot. It's as-fed, it's as it is in the package, but the standards that we use on this channel, which are small animal clinical nutrition, which is linked down below, you can peruse that. But I do have the standards that we go over every single week. I've got a couple shorts on those standards. Those standards are on a dry matter basis. And so what does that mean? That means that they have taken all all of the moisture out that way we can compare things because it's not fair to compare something like a canned food with all the moisture in it on a percentage basis to a dry food that is got a different percentage so usually dry foods are going to be around 20% maybe less it's listed there on the guaranteed analysis where the flip is you know the case on a canned food canned foods gonna be like 80% moisture and so in order to compare those we have to remove the moisture and to do that there is a very simple calculation now I know a lot of you guys are probably a little bit leery about doing math but I promise I'm gonna make this very simple for you and then you can also do this conversion so you can compare your favorite canned foods to dry foods to the standards all right so let's get started. All right, so in order to do that, I'm going to pull up a green screen here with the uh, whiteboard that I have used to calculate this for you guys and do the demonstration. We are gonna do something called dimensional analysis. And so what that is, is taking two equations and using their relationship to be able to come up with an answer um, as to you know what is the dry matter basis of this canned food versus um, you know the actual standards which are already presented on dry matter basis. So on the left side, Side of the equation we're gonna have the food that we're gonna use and on the right side of the equation we're gonna have the dry matter basis so um, I pulled this label for you guys it's just a random label you can see that the percentages are a little bit different than what we're used to so um, on the left side here we're going to put excuse me on the right side here we're going to put hundred percent on the bottom that is a uh, dry matter hundred percent dry matter and the top is gonna to be the percentage of the nutrient we're gonna call that X on the other side, we're gonna have the as fed percentage. And so 100% minus the eight, excuse me, the 80 that you can see here tells us what we have, you know, what we're gonna have on a dry matter basis. So 100% moisture, moisture minus the 80% moisture leaves us with only 20% of this being dry matter. That's gonna be on the bottom of the equation. The top of the equation is going to be the nutrient parameter we're looking for. So in this case, we're gonna do um, crude protein. That's 11%. Now we do a little bit of math. We're going to do a crisscrossy thing here. So 11 times 100, then we're going to divide it by 100 minus 80, which is 20. So this food is 20% dry matter. Um, it was 80% moisture, so it is, that means that it is 20% dry matter. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, leave me a comment. I can try to re-explain that. But we have 100% moisture minus the 80% moisture that they're listing tells us that this food is 20% dry matter. And so we're gonna set up our equation like this. X is the dry matter basis of the nutrient we're looking for. So 1,100 divided by 20 is X. So that's 11 times 100 divided by 20 is X. So that tells us X is 55%. So the protein of this canned food is actually 55%. This is a cat food, and so, you know, 55% is a pretty standard thing. Now, let's try this again. Let's do another example. Let's go ahead and try to set up an equation. Let's set up equation using the crude fat. So they're listening at 2%. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have 2% over 100 minus 80 is 
you know, synonymous to the equation X over 100, where X is the dry matter basis fat, fat on a dry matter basis. So two times 100, that's 200, divided by 100 minus 80, that's 20, is gonna give us X. X being fat on a dry matter basis. And so when you do that, when you divide that out, you find that fat is 10%, all right? So I hope that made sense to you. This is converting to a dry matter basis using dimensional analysis. Now you can also do this for dry foods. And so dry foods do have moisture in there. You will find on the guaranteed analysis some moisture content listed. And so if you're using the package to um, compare to the standards, often it's best to get the closest, closest, closest um, evaluation if you go ahead and convert dry matter basis, um, excuse me, a dry food to a dry matter basis. And so so you can do that using these exact same steps. You need to find the moisture content, you need to find your um, parameters, and you need to set up your two equations. So, all right, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned a little something and you can use this um, going forward. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Bye.